I'm gonna keep this thing on my head. Until this team figures something out. You hear after the game today, the Jays have a closed door meeting, the players only meeting. What really can that do? We will see, I guess. But no matter what, they are two, and I think, the, what's the record? Like two and 16, or two and 16 in their last 18 games in their division, or something nonsense like that. They have been horrific. They lost, they got swept by the Red Sox. They lost three of four to the Yankees. They got swept by the Orioles, and they just lost three of four to the Tampa Bay Rays. They're only one game over 500. They are playing horrific baseball. Now, the biggest talking point out of this game is the consistent struggles of Alec Manoa. A lot of people can attest to that too. Oh, Danny Jansen's not behind the plate, and Kirky's behind behind the dish, and Jansen was behind the plate in his last start. Sure. But with Danny Jansen now going for an MRI, you might have to deal with that. And Alec Manoa's line of three innings only allows three hits. But it was five runs, four were earned, six strikeouts, and he walks five. Just not good enough. And it's the command that's killing him. He had six Ks through three. He only allowed three hits. But those free passes will always find a way to come back and haunt you. Now, sure, the Jays' offense didn't get much done. Three runs on eight hits. But you need your starter to give you more of a chance to be in a ball game. What do we always say? We don't need a guy, a starting pitcher, to go out there and throw seven or eight shutout innings. Give your team a chance to win. That's all we ask for. That's all the offense asks for. And when you're down 6-1, after taking a 1-0 lead, I'm sorry, when you're down 5-1, excuse me, in the third inning, and you feel like every time Manoa's going out there, he's either walking a guy or hitting a guy or something. I mean, I'm wearing his jersey right now. I love the guy dearly, and I want to see him succeed. Whether it's the pitch clock, whether it can't be the catcher, because Kirky was his personal catcher last year. So all of a sudden, that thing's falling apart. Who knows? But Alec Manoa is a talking point, and it's a big issue. And as I mentioned, you've lost three of four to the Rays. So now they have the season series, where it's actually hilarious how going into this series, you if you won today, you would have still had the season series over Tampa. But you didn't. The Jays had the fake comeback late. Dalton Varsho, we're all trying to like this guy dearly. I, I really am. They have the left-hander Colin Pache out on the hill in the, in the ninth inning. And they pinch hit Dalton Varsho for the right-hander Ernie Clement. Who has a total of, he had one at bat today. It was a sacrifice fly. Did a little small ball. He has a total of three plate appearances as a Toronto Blue Jay going into today. And he gets the pinch hit assignment. With what? The bases loaded, one out, tying run at the plate? It tells you the lack of faith they have in a guy like Dalton Varsho right now. And I'm trying so hard. Because I'm seeing Guriel and I'm seeing Moreno and what they're doing. And I want Varsho to do well. So when he walked in the first inning and came around to score in a Brandon Belt single, I'm thinking, all right, he's on base. He had a couple hits the last two days as well. And then he goes 0 for 3 in the rest of the game. Alejandro Kirk goes three for four. The run scored on the on the offensive side of the ball. Hell, he had three of the eight hits today, and uh, they were all singles. That it's a problem. The Jays' uh, power hitters they don't really exist, right? Your best hitter is Bo Bichette's got nine home runs. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. eight home runs and one off a, a position player. George Springer seven. Let me go to the MLB leaders. Now, I'm not saying these guys should be up there in that list. But Adoles Garcia has 14. Aaron Judge, 14. Rafael Devers, 13. Luis Robert has 13. Shoei and Mike Trout both have 12. Jordan has 12. Ryan Mountcastle, 11. Yanni Diaz, 11. Randy Rosarina, 11. Have Brent Rooker? He's got 11 on Oakland. Uh, Sal Perez has 11. Uh, Josh Lowe has 11. You know, bottom line... Bobachet is tied for like 20-something odd like in home run. Those are the leaders on the Jays team. 
A team that plays in all of these hitter-friendly ballparks. Well, they don't. They have a tough time leaving the yard. They've had a tough time getting hits in clutch moments. And they're having a really big problem. Now, is this just what the Blue Jays are this year? I don't want to jump to that conclusion yet because we still have over 100 games to go. But you talk to me around late June, and if this, is, this team is below 500 and these stretches continue, we'll have that discussion. For right now, I'm just here to break down each game, and right now it is painful to watch Blue Jay baseball. Absolutely painful. Watching Vladdy's AB in the ninth inning, right? You got two, you're the tying run. And he's, what was it, a slider or a sink or something like that on the inner half. And he just rolls over on it. Barely, it was just a little number. Nothing doing. How about you wait a pitch and look for a pitch you can drive? I don't know. The approach to the plate really aren't there. You're not getting the starting pitching. And look, let's be honest. Well, from Alec Manoa, obviously, certain guys are doing well. But when certain guys are doing good, other things go wrong. Right? It was defense a few starts ago. And then it was offense, where it was dry for like a week and a half, two weeks. Then it was the bullpen, where you didn't want to throw anybody out there, and you needed guys to go complete games because your bullpen was so bad. Now it's just a collective effort of things, right? You had three shutout innings, sorry, sorry, three no-hit innings from Trevor Richards after Alec Manoa left the ball game. Adam Simber gave the one run, the sixth run of the ball game. Uh, he went an inning, allowed a couple hits in a run. Tim Mays threw a clean inning, had a couple strikeouts. Your bullpen went, uh, it was at uh, five innings of one run ball. They did their job tonight. But the inability of Alec Manoa to give you any sort of length and to be in constant pressure. Ladies and gentlemen, Alec Manoa threw three innings of work. He threw 87 pitches. I mean, it just looks painful watching him out there. I don't know if that means a Phantom Elson's coming up, but who are you going to bring up to replace him? Like, I know people love to say that. I love to say, send him down, send him down. Who are you going to replace him with? <laughs> Casey Lawrence? Yeah, we all know how that experiment ended last year. So no, we don't want to... Trent Thornton, you want to see that back? I don't even know if he's starting in AAA. Who knows? He's got to figure it out. And it's the throwing strikes. What did we say yesterday? And I'm going to wrap it up with this. What did we even say? Well, I got to preview the next series. But we talked about Alec Manoa's last outing. And yeah, Schneider pulled him too early. And they didn't mean to. And blah, blah, blah. Five and two thirds for Alec Manoa in that game. He walked one guy. He allowed double the hits that he did today. Albeit he threw almost double the innings. But he allowed six hits, walked one, only allowed two runs. Because his stuff is so nasty that he can get out of tough situations. But he had three innings today. He walks five. It's just painful, right? He, wa he walked five today. He walked, obviously, one against the Orioles. Then against the Yankees, he walked seven. Against Philly, he walked four. You're asking for trouble when you're putting guys on without them even making contact with the baseball. He knows it. We all know it. But it's about fixing it. And I don't know how you do it midseason. Because when you lose a strike zone the way he has... It's tough to find. Now, we'll see how it goes the rest of the year and whatnot, but right now it's tough. Let's move on to the next game because we're finally out of the division. I think that gives every Jays fan a little bit of a sigh of relief because get the hell out of our division right now. We're playing awful, and every time we're losing these games, it's adding insult to injury because you know you're dropping even farther and farther in the standings because you're losing to divisional opponents. You now go to Minnesota to take on the Minnesota Twins, who are first in the AL Central... Two games over 500. <laughs> you realize we'd be one game out of first place in that division? Meanwhile, we're fifth in our division. <laughs> Whatever. Game one goes tomorrow night. It's Kevin Gosman on the mound for the Blue Jays. Much needed. You got your ace on the hill. Louis Varland. No idea who the guy is. He's on the mound for the uh, Minnesota Twins. He's thrown 28 innings. It's an ERA of 4.18. 31 strikeouts in 21, 21, 28 innings. Only seven walks. And game two is Chris Bassett versus Pablo Lopez. Uh, Pablo Lopez is in the area 390, so it's a little higher than he's used to being. Um, but either way, still a solid pitcher. you got Chris Bassett, who's been outstanding so far this year for the Blue Jays. He's on the mound there. And then the finale is Bailey Ober, who has been phenomenal. 35 innings pitch in the area of 255. And going up against Jose Barrios. And I talked about him in the last, no, two videos ago? Where they won the game. 
And I thought Jose Barrios has been phenomenal. We'll see how it goes, though. Those are your three guys going in the Minnesota series. I think it can speak for every Jays fan. Find a way to win a damn series. That's all I got. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the ball game. Well, no, 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 no. Definitely not the ball game today. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game for the Toronto Blue Jays? Not much to like. A lot to not like. Comment down below. Go nuts. All right. Twitter, Instagram, Discord, TikTok, all those links are down below. I'll be keeping this thing on. As long as this team keeps stinking, they put two wins together, it may come off. Or maybe a rally helmet. I don't know. Either way, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Jays edition, 8-10 first pitch there in Minnesota. Um, Kevin Gosman on the mound for the Blue Jays. Louis Varland on the mound for the Minnesota uh, Timberwolves. Twins. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you guys then.